All right, so I'm here to talk about creative local economy, but before I do, we're gonna play a little game. It's a free association game, easy to play, there are no right answers, so here's the game. Name five bands. Go ahead, no, to yourself, to yourself, to yourself, <laughs> quietly to yourself. All right, <laughs> name five bands. Think about it. Okay, great, you got them? Not too bad, pretty easy, right? So here's another game that we're gonna play. Name five local bands. Got it? It's a little harder, right? And I'm willing to bet that, the fi that these artists that you named have yet to achieve the success or visibility of the first five bands that you listed. Now you can play this game with any sort of creative profession and the results are much the same. So if the foremost artists that we can think of don't live in Minnesota, well then the question exists, where do they live? I'd guess that the majority of these artists, if they live in the US, live in either New York or California. Now why is this? It's because these places have built an infrastructure around creating and exporting culture. Like it or not, local artists must compete with Hollywood movies, major record labels, international publishers, and touring Broadway shows for the local entertainment dollar. With such a wealth of options, it makes sense that the flashiest, biggest, and best promoted work is going to succeed. Therefore, most of our entertainment spending is flowing out of this community. I suggest that this is a problem. Even our major local arts organizations tend to be more interested in bringing great art to Minnesota rather than supporting the art that already exists here. This imbalance sends a clear message to local artists. If you want to make it big, then you must leave. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered why the Minnesota that we see in movies isn't, isn't the Minnesota that we, uh, that we know? Despite a wealth of innovation and talent, oh, sorry, many artists view Minnesota as a place to cut their teeth before moving on to the big time, but this doesn't have to be the case. When the film industry began in 1912, LA was full of ranchers and orange groves. It isn't about the size of the city, it's about the quality of the creative work coming out of it. Now, too often in the media, we are depicted as a state, instead of the creative, awesome place we know, we're depicted as this. Why is that? That's because we're not controlling the narrative. If we want the national perception of our state to reflect the hip, intelligent, savvy society that we actually live in, then we must become cultural exporters. This requires three things. Talent. We must draw, train, and retain a population of talented artists. The low cost of living and solid arts support that make Minneapolis a very livable city are incredibly helpful. And as a result, many artists begin their careers here, but to keep them here, we must also provide them with opportunity. Talented artists must have the ability to achieve meaningful, sustainable presence in local culture. This will validate their work and help them feel that they can succeed here as well as they could in another community. That requires visibility. Artists need the means to cut through the cultural noise and be heard, to find new audience both within and outside this community. That's historically taken one of two forms, either tireless self-promotion or the big break. One artist's big break can ignite an entire scene. Because of these guys' success in the early 90s, many local Seattle bands were picked up and signed to major labels. But with the media industries now in clampdown mode, don't count on that sort of thing happening again. Instead, we must look to a more sustainable model of success. I would posit that that sustainable model would be this, Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. These guys have completely rebranded the local scene by using a boutique model of creative promotion. Artists with shared values working together to export their creative output to an expanding base of loyal followers. By working together to imbue people with a sense of pride and ownership over the creative work in this community, we can change the cultural landscape of Minnesota and give local artists the ability to succeed nationally. Here's what you can do in order to help out. First of all, attend. Attend an event. Buy a ticket. See art. Show up. Take a risk. Find art that speaks to you. Become an active part of your community and you'll learn how to find artists you like. A strong local following will do wonders for artists of every stripe. Two, invest. Support the work of those artists you love. Find ways to strengthen your connection with their work and you will help them survive to make more of it. Buy their stuff, support their Kickstarter, give to the arts, and above all else, help support creating creative infrastructure in this city. And finally, promote. Spread the word. Tell your friends, locally, nationally, or abroad. Artists will only stay in this community if they feel that their reach can grow, so help them build it. A strong creative scene benefits everyone, artists and non-artists alike, by bringing money and attention to our state. 
By exporting our creative work and redirecting the flow of entertainment money towards our state, Minnesota will become a place that more artists can stay and celebrate, thereby improving the chances that our stories as a community will, heard, will be heard and helping the hip, creative Minnesota that we all know become a place that everybody loves. Thank you. <laughs>